All right, welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke. It's the fourth Thursday or the fifth Thursday. It's the last Thursday of the month. I don't remember what we did. Thanksgiving was a week ago. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I had a fantastic That's Thanksgiving. That's awesome. Thanksgiving here in Las Vegas is one of my uh, one of my favorite times, and it's just mm-hmm. such a such a great weather and such an easy way to do Thanksgiving here. Especially if you don't want to cook or clean or anything like that, you have a lot of options here. So I am here with Jenny Fay from Cupcake Girls. Yes. You're the Las Vegas City Director for Cupcake mm-hmm. Girls, and what Cupcake Girls do is they provide confidential support to those involved in the sex industry as well as those affected by domestic sex trafficking through holistic resources, case management, and aftercare. And I'm going to let you describe what all those cool. things really mean. That sounds good. They provide non-judgmental support, and that's really the part that I find so compelling about what it yeah. is you do is that there's no judgment associated with how you found them, what you're doing now, what you intend to be doing in the future. They're just there to help you with whatever, with the things they can help you with and what you need right now, regardless of what you're doing right now. And I think that's so great because that's, that's not how a lot of people, not how a lot of groups that are trying to help people work. Um, so, and your, your kind of your key tenants are respect, resources, and relationships. Well, welcome, Jenny. Thank you for being here. Tell us about Cupcake Girls and how it got started in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for inviting me on. So, Cupcake Girls has existed officially for almost eight years now. We started as a 501c3 in 2011, but the story starts before then. Mm-hmm. So, in about 2009, Joy Hoover, our founder and president, mm-hmm. she and her husband, they were living in Michigan. But they came to Vegas on vacation, and they have a huge heart for people in general, but especially for marginalized communities. So even when they were here on vacation, they couldn't help but look around and see who's being left out. And it became very clear to them, people in the adult industry in Las Vegas are very left out, um, really not having access to some basic resources Mm -hmm. and, and pushed aside a lot. So... They experienced this and then kind of went home and just couldn't shake it. And so about three months later, they looked at each other and said, we have to do something. They sold pretty much everything that they owned. They moved to Las Vegas Mm -hmm. and Joy said they lived on people's couches. They Mm -hmm. ate lots of ramen noodles and they spent about a year just trying to get to know the adult industry and get Mm -hmm. to know who the people were and what the people wanted and needed instead of coming in and saying, here's what we think you need, but just to listen well. So she did this by taking cupcakes into the strip clubs and legal brothels. And on one of the early visits, when she was bringing the cupcakes in, she said some of the dancers looked over and said, our cupcake girls are here. So Joy was like, well, I guess we're the cupcake girls. So um, then by early 2011, like I said, we got our 501c3. Mm -hmm. And by late 2011, we actually opened our branch in Portland. Okay. So that's kind of the story of how we came to be. I imagine that took a long time. Um... And was uh, could have could have been very frustrating for Joy building that trust with the adult uh, com- entertainment community, sex worker community here in town. Um, it's it's not not known for being a very trusting community, and, yeah. and kind of rightly so, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so consistency was key for us, yeah. just to keep showing up, and, and still is. And, yeah. and, you, and you continue to do that seven years, eight years later, yeah. right? Yeah. So so how did you get involved? So I got involved because I, I've been involved for about a year. Mm-hmm. And for several years, I've just had this um, growing passion in my heart to equip and empower women. And I, I didn't really know how that would play out in my life. I kind of mm-hmm. tried things here and there. And then about a year ago, I sensed maybe a new horizon uh, coming for me. And I was talking with one of my friends. And we had a mutual friend who volunteered with the Cupcake Girls. Okay. So my friend just said, I, I think... You would love working with the Cupcake Girls. I think it would be a great fit for you. Mm -hmm. And so that started the conversation. And within my first conversation with Joy, oh, my goodness, I was so... I was so enthralled by the mission, by her passion for it. Mm-hmm. And then even just as I shared about who I was and what they needed, it seemed like it was going to be a great match. And it, it has been a really good match where I felt like I could contribute well, but also where I felt mm-hmm. like I was being fulfilled as I did that. I, I feel like that's something that that you do well. And maybe that's uh, some of the secret sauce that Joy has, because I haven't met her in person, but I've had mm-hmm. a few emails with her. and But I've met a few of the folks working in the volunteer positions and in you know mm-hmm. in, in the office themselves. And, and you, you seem to have this sixth sense about this is the right person for us and and the mm-hmm. sixth sense about this is the place I need to be and I think mm-hmm. that's so cool that that you're able to build those bonds so quickly so mm-hmm. so tell us about the approach that Cupcake yeah. Girls takes because it is a little as we mentioned it's a little bit different in the the, the organization to help this community yes 
are not necessarily as low judgment or no judgment as you are. So tell us about your approach to yes. helping this community. So our number one core value is we love without agenda. So we don't come in and say, I love you if, I love you when. We just come in and say, I love you and want to help in any way that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. So we have three main programs in our direct care branch, which is our branch that works directly with our clients. The first one is our outreach program. So every month we still take cupcakes into mm -hmm. the strip clubs and legal brothels in hot pink boxes. Mm -hmm. And we take our resource cards that just tell who we are and resources that we offer. Mm -hmm. And our hope is we start the conversation. It's a really good icebreaker and it lets people know we exist. And like I said, we're here and we want to help mm -hmm. if ever our help is needed or wanted. Mm -hmm. And then our other two programs come into play once a client reaches out to us. Okay. We have our referral program and our intensive case management program. So our referral program is when a client maybe reaches out and just has one specific need. Like, I, I just need help getting to a dentist or... I just need help on my taxes. Somebody who's going to understand, you know, how all the laws work and not going to judge me when they find out and not, what I and do. And not going to rip me off because I might be paying them right. The cash, right? Right. So all those things, you know, that's a referral where we can refer them to one of our vetted partners or resources and then follow up with them in about mm -hmm. a week and see how you doing. Do you need anything else? Our intensive case management program is for our clients who they want to meet with their client, their advocate weekly. So then together, they're going to build a plan for how that client can get where they want to go. And so we use an empowerment model. Mm -hmm. We don't tell people what to do. Uh, we try to listen well, ask good questions and really hear what does this person want? Where do they want to go? And what mm -hmm. tools do we have that we can put in their hands that we can offer? And then if the client wants to take those resources, cool. Mm -hmm. And if not, cool. They're grown ups, and it's up to them what uh, they do or don't want to do. It really does sound, not to be lit up, but uh, a phrase we used to use in the Air Force, big boys and girls time, right? You, yeah. you know what it is you where, where you want to get to. Mm -hmm. Here's how I can help you. If you don't want to do this today, we'll be here. If you want to come, if you don't want to do this and you want to come back in three months, we'll still be. Exactly. So yep. that's awesome. Um, human trafficking. Yeah. That is something you guys are. Yes. I mean, this is, this is kind of where this all started really. Yeah. It has a higher level of consciousness now in the United States yeah. than I think it did. But I think when people think of human trafficking, they think of things that are going on overseas. They think of things happening in Africa and yes, Asia yes. and, um, you know, Eastern mm -hmm. Europe and that kind of thing. Can you tell us more about how human trafficking happens close to home yes. and what what we could or should all be looking for? What are some indicators we could be looking for, especially here in Las Vegas? So I, I was, um, before I started working with the Cupcake Girls, probably like the general public. And when I thought of human trafficking, I thought of like some really extreme movie that I had mm -hmm. seen. And yeah, it's like and, Liam Neeson, right? Yes. Yeah. And you don't really see that. I don't see that in my neighborhood. Right. So trafficking doesn't happen here. What, what I realized was, yes, it, the, the Liam Neeson kind of trafficking, that's a reality in our world and mm -hmm. it's not okay. We provide aftercare for survivors of that mm -hmm. as well. But what we're seeing more and more is what's being called domestic sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. That's trafficking that's happening within the United States, within Las Vegas, within our neighborhoods. And so trafficking is, especially sex trafficking, anyone who is in the adult industry under coercion, deception, manipulation, threat, mm -hmm. and they're not in control of their wages. So anyone in a pimp situation mm -hmm. is in a trafficking situation because they are not fully in control of the choices happening around them. They're not mm -hmm. fully in control of their wages. So what we're seeing with that is um, a lot of nuances with trafficking. For instance, we had a, a client come to us recently and she gave us permission to share this part of her story. Mm -hmm. but. She had been trafficked for 20 years and she didn't realize it because there was such extreme manipulation happening. Um, so she, she didn't fully compute. She just thought the guy that she was with was a sociopath. Mm -hmm. She didn't understand all that was happening. Well, maybe, um, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I think he is, <laughs> but also there's more to it. She said, even at, at the airport, those signs in the bathroom stalls about trafficking, she said she would see those signs and think to herself, those poor girls. Not ever thinking that she was in that situation because for her, she wasn't being physically abused. And in her mm -hmm. mind, that was what meant someone was being mm -hmm. trapped. You're were, you were chained to a radiator somewhere, yes. right? She was experiencing every other kind of abuse. Uh, well, and yeah. let's talk about that because this can be yeah. really insidious. It can be, it can be as insidious as some of these women or men 
are getting paid for what they do, and the second they're done, they're handing that money to somebody else. Yes. Right? Yes. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not advocating anybody breaking any laws. I'm just, yeah. but, but I mean, it could be as insidious as that, is that that's the setup, right? And, mm -hmm. and they're trained that that's the yeah. setup. Yeah. And so what are, what are some, some of those really insidious things that, that we should, we could or should be looking out for? So we're starting to see maybe three main types of traffickers. Like I said, it's really nuanced, mm -hmm. but you can kind of think in terms of three different types. And one type is what's called the gorilla pimp or trafficker. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what most people think of when they think of a pimp. Mm -hmm. Someone who has multiple people, typically women, that they um, keep in submission by physical violence and force mm -hmm. and threats like that. Um, so to be on the lookout, that's a little bit easier to recognize. And mm -hmm. typically people in that situation know that that is not a healthy situation mm -hmm. and, and would like to be out of it, but are often fearful as mm -hmm. to how to get out of it. But another thing that we're seeing is what's called a Romeo pimp. Mm -hmm. This is someone who um, often poses as a boyfriend or a girlfriend. We, we do tend to see it more um, a guy and a girl sure, sure. type of situation. So uh, a boyfriend maybe who gives lots of gifts. It's mm -hmm. a really um, sudden and intense relationship where this guy just really takes care of this girl and mm -hmm. then something turns. Maybe he says, well, I take care of you, so now you need to take care mm -hmm. of me and my friends. Or, or they have this fine relationship and something snaps in the partner and suddenly, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're throwing that adult worker against the wall and saying, mm -hmm. from now on, you're going to give me every penny that you make right. or I'll kill you. Uh, and it, Sometimes it's a, a light switch like that, but a lot of times it's this really unhealthy relationship and people in that situation may not compute that this is my pimp or my trafficker. Mm -hmm. They just think this is my abuser. They think I have a bad boyfriend. Yes. I have a jerk for a boyfriend or a jerk so, for a spouse. So, and, and I think, uh, tell me if I'm wrong about this, yeah. but what my own research on this, what's really important about this is with these Romeo pimps, this is always the plan. This is never, it's not that switch goes on and, and some, like they get in a fight and then all of a sudden I'm going to make you, I'm going to yeah. make you work for me. This is always the plan. Yeah. Typic typically. And I suppose there are some situations where it just happens. However it comes about, it's not all right. And mm -hmm. really that deciding, that thing that's really significant is that the worker is not in control of their wages mm -hmm. because that means then they're, they're not in control of what happens in their life and they're not in control of being able to walk away if they wanted mm -hmm. to walk away. Um, the third face that we're starting to see more and more is what's being called a CEO pimp. Mm -hmm. This is someone who really comes at it from a business standpoint, presents themselves as a business person, mm -hmm. has business cards, maybe talks about themselves as being an agent. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, you know, they come up to someone and say, has anyone ever told you, you could be a model? I, I want to help you get that mm. going. Here's my card. Let's exchange information. And then that um, turns into that not a modeling relationship, mm -hmm. but pushing someone into the adult industry and taking their wages. Mm -hmm. But an, a, a piece of trafficking that we're realizing is because of the stigma around the adult community, most people in the adult community aren't talking about what they do mm -hmm. or what their relationship is with the people mm -hmm. in their life or in the industry. And so because of that, they're not, your neighbor isn't going to come to you and say, right. Hey, I've been hearing this word trafficking and I want you to know, I think that might be me. Right. It happens through relationships. So mm -hmm. even with us at the cupcake girls, sometimes we have clients who come in and as they're telling their story, we have moments where we say gently, um, oh. Hey, did some of the things that you described are characteristics of mm -hmm. sex trafficking? Are you aware of that? Mm -hmm. And so we are actually working on a brochure that lists out some of those characteristics. Um, like I mentioned, the not in control of your wages, um, the manipulation, the threat, the coercion, mm -hmm. and not giving appropriate, not being given appropriate breaks for food or water, mm -hmm. things like that, that our clients could look at and see if some of those things maybe resonate with them. Because that client who'd been trafficked for 20 years, mm -hmm. the way the light bulb went off, um, she saw online that document that's basic human rights. Mm -hmm. And then she went to our website and she read the definition of domestic sex trafficking mm -hmm. and suddenly realized that was her life. Mm -hmm. um, so it happens usually through relationship and seeing some of the characteristics or having someone else gently say some of these characteristics mm -hmm. sound like this situation. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is something that we, if we, if we felt there was someone in our lives yeah. that, that was going through this, we could, we could kind of say to them, 
I'm probably not the right person to talk to you about mm. this, but I, I know someone who could talk to you about this and maybe give you some perspective on this and kind of gently ease them over mm -hmm. to you. Yep. Well, and one of the great things about the Cupcake Girls is we're a resource organization. So if you know of anyone who's in the adult industry, our services are open to any individual who is working or ever has worked in the adult industry mm -hmm. in any capacity. So if you have any friends who are in that industry or have been, let them know they can reach out to us just for help with any kind of resource. And then hopefully as their advocate has conversations with them and is figuring out who they are and where they want to mm -hmm. go, some of these things might come up that might um, mm -hmm. raise some flags if it's a trafficking and, situation. And one of the things that you and I have talked about, but I don't think we've gotten to this in, in real depth here, is you're not trying to lean them out of that industry. Exactly. You're just trying to get them the help they need yes. and let them make their own choices about Yes. what they do with their lives at that point. Yes. So. We are not a rescue organization. Right. We are a resources and empowerment organization. I think that's so important. Um, yep. Okay, so I think we are out of time. Okay. So who can we help connect you with and how can our viewers reach you? Yes. Our website is www.thecupcakegirls.org. If you jump on there, you'll find tabs to be able to get connected as a volunteer, to donate. You'll be able to find lots of ways that you can support us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're going to have you stay right here. We're going to bring Thanks. Michelle back for our panel discussion, talk a little bit more broadly about uh, some leadership and business topics and things going on in Las Vegas. I'm Jason LaDuke. This is Geeks Are Sexy. We'll be right back with our panel discussion.